Ben used to be a youth pastor, then at age 52 had a midlife crisis, entered a relationship with a catfish named Mahogany who said she was 24, turns out she's 22 and that is the same age as his daughter. Yikes. When your stepmom is your age, lol. Ben's from Michigan and the love of his life, Mahogany, is from California. Whoops, I mean Peru. <laughs> FBI, open up! Also, you guys, there are rumors flying around right now that Mahogany asked Ben for more money, which I kind of believe because he already gave her $1,000 and he even said that earlier in the episodes. She asked for a loan, which is different. A loan is money. She, she asked you for a loan? So did you give it to her? Yeah, I did. Oh no. Ben. You guys saw my last video I made on this couple. I said a lot of things that needed to be said. Also, you guys might not know this, but I actually reached out to Ben on Instagram and I offered my acting expertise, but Ben just read my message and didn't respond, which isn't mighty Christian of him. And he preaches, you know, Christianity a lot. So I just kind of figured he would respond to me, but it's okay. Honestly, it's spilt liquor under the bridge. I am very preoccupied with Warhammer 3. Present day, Ben was recently spotted with his new mystery wife in Michigan. Who's that Pokemon? I want to say out of all the seasons of this show, this cat Past has been the worst about sharing details about their personal lives while the season is currently airing. And I don't know if they just don't care about the, um, I almost said NFTs, but no, the non-disclosure agreements that they signed. Sorry, I'm super high right now, but in terms of professionalism, I feel like this cast is severely lacking compared to the past cast members. Something that was also recently brought to my attention is the fact that Mahaguni is an actress and she was in a commercial that has resurfaced. Wood Girl said she was too shy to video chat with Ben, but I guess not too shy to be in a whole commercial. That's suspicious. And this commercial she was in was shared by various 90 Day Fiance dedicated Instagram pages. When we first see Ben in the latest episode, he's of course in the pool shirtless because his main personality trait is fitness. I love all these gains I've experienced from drinking muscle bills. Ben informs the viewers that he's been in Peru for three days and it's way different than he expected. I get why Ben is speaking negatively about his experience in Peru because since he touched down in Peru, this guy has been taking nothing but L's. First, Mahaguni doesn't pick him up from the airport. Then she doesn't get intimate with him. She stands him up for an hour at dinner until she finally shows up. Then she gives him a tour of her place, which is obviously an Airbnb. And finally, she lies to him about her physical appearance and her age. If I was in Ben's shoes, I would just cut my losses and start climbing Machu Picchu, listen to my AirPods, listen to my ghost main music, and just really vibe out and have a spiritual journey. Ben is not I. We obviously do not think the same, so instead he calls one of his friends to get advice about the Mahaguni situation. From what I knew, she was living with her mom and dad, and now all of a sudden she's living, you know, independently from them in this really expensive, like, condo. That kind of reminds me of Will Ferrell in that movie Old School. Remember when he was at the college parties, even though he was an old man, trying to, you know, get some young punani and party with everybody? That's how I feel Ben is right now. His current mindset is away at college. Ben and his friend have a somewhat boring conversation. I'm just going to skip ahead of it because the most interesting part about their conversation was the friend's reaction being like, Oh my God, no way. That girl is real. I never saw that coming. She's real. <laughs> She's real. No way. She's as sweet as I thought she was. After Pastor Ben talks to his bromigo about the Mahaguni situation, he meets up with Mahaguni and it's a special day today because today is the first time that they are both going to meet Mahaguni's friends. Are tus amigas ya están aquí? Yes, they're coming. Coming? Okay. Yes. Yo veo uh, una uh, tienda de frutos. Mm -hmm, let me uh, see. Yeah. You would think that even if these two are strangers, Ben would ask her what her favorite color is or what kind of movies she likes. Like just basic questions that you would ask another human being when you're trying to better understand somebody. I just feel like they don't know anything about each other and we don't know anything about them because they're not asking any questions. We're not learning anything. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hola. Okay, Benjamin, that is Elizabeth and she's Angie. Angie. Benjamin. 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 Yeah. yeah, nice to meet you. Y'all remember when we were kids and we went on those school field trips and there were parent chaperones? That's what this feels like to me. The only difference is Ben's trying to clap those cheeks, respectfully. No one, and then Ben's like, hey, do you kids play Fortnite? <laughs> uh, anyone hombre? Hungry? What? So Mahogany's friends, Maple and Redwood, say that they went to school together with Mahogany. And if that's the case, I'm just wondering why Mahogany speaks perfect English while these girls don't. For the Wet Sox Spanish community, we found out last video that Mahogany doesn't speak with a Peruvian accent, which makes her more sus. But do the friends? Let me know in the comments. Can you tell me something about Mahogany that you love about her? Bueno, conozco a Mahogany, siempre ha sido una persona muy responsable. Ben's feeling confident while wearing his favorite
favorite gray compression shirt. All of a sudden, while asking questions, Ben makes a shocking discovery, and that's the fact that these girls don't know that him and Mahaduni are dating. She didn't tell them. Well, honestly, I didn't think you were her boyfriend. But she did tell us she had a friend from abroad coming to visit her. So, ella de ser de nosotros amigas. Amigos. Sí. Okay. Yikes, this is awkward, my guys. I feel like Ben is very immature for his age. This just seems like a conversation that you guys should have in private. And it makes it more awkward when he's purposely speaking in Spanish so that the friends stay in the loop with the conversation because Mahogany speaks perfect English. So he could just be the bigger person and realize, yeah, maybe it is a little bit embarrassing for this girl to tell her friends that we're dating because of the age difference. You guys picking up what I'm putting down? Like, don't you think it's strange that this guy used to be a youth pastor? So he was actually giving counsel to the youth, but now he's dating the youth. And uh, to make matters worse, he's not very emotionally intelligent. So I don't think he should have ever been giving counsel to the youth. Um, Mahogany, am I your boyfriend or just your friend? <laughs> Soy tu novio, solo tu amigo. Who am I to you? It's, uh, El... Cringe. <laughs> Yo papi el cringe. I still speak better Spanish than 99.9% .9 of the creatures on the show. Anyway, for this season, I feel like we were all expecting TLC to take us to Fleming's. Bruh, they took us to the Golden Corral. This shit is ridiculous. I think, Bran, you never Brand? told me, oh, Mahogany, you do you want to be my girlfriend? Oh, it's because Ben didn't formally ask and make it Facebook official. That's the storyline we're going with, bet. I'm looking at some texts, just reminding myself that it was real. So Ben proceeds to read the text messages that were exchanged between him and Mahogany to give himself reassurance for the reassurance that she's not giving him. And I thought it'd be a good idea to read them out loud because their conversations are always jokes. Ben says, but I really love to hear you tell me that you love me. Very cringe and desperate message from you, Benjamin. Anyway, Mahogany responds with, you know, baby, I love you. Thank you, baby. I must say that God is calling me to you. He is calling me to start a family with you and I'm so excited excited to begin. To which Mahogany responded, I also wish to have many children with you, Ben. You'd be an amazing father. I bet you $10,000 if we asked Ben why he loved Mahogany, he would somehow bring God and love and all these things into the conversation. He wouldn't bring out one real reason why he loves this girl. And that's why this feels disingenuous because they don't know anything about each other. They don't know what each other's favorite book is. Every time these two are together, they have nothing to fucking talk about. And we can see that by how they drive for four hours to Chucanica or La Chupacabra. I don't know what the names are, but it's those sand dunes in Peru. It's strange. Uh, tu no tienes algo pare insignias? No stop signs? What do you mean? There's no stop signs or traffic light. They're driving there four hours to get there and in the car they have nothing to talk about. Until Mahogany, being as smart as she is, she's way smarter than we gave her credit for. She brings up the one thing that this guy knows about, God. She asks him a question about Jesus. He goes into pastor mode and they start talking about Jesus. That is the one thing that these two have in common. Que Jesús pudo aguantar tanto sufrimiento en este mundo. I think before he went to the cross, he spent several hours in a garden all by himself just preparing. Like you have to prepare for suffering. I don't think your ex-wife was prepared for the suffering you inflicted on her, Ben. First episode, you were introduced, you badmouthed her, basically called her a bitter old lady. You were with your first ex-wife for like 20 plus years and have many children together. Way to set a good example for those kids, buddy boy. The relationship with my ex-wife is cold. I'm confident in saying I and everyone else wasn't prepared for the secondhand embarrassment I get watching your segment on the show, is what I would say. However, it just so happens that they get to the sand dunes and it's easily the funnest date of the season. Ben and Mahogany are laughing and smiling as they go on Mr. Toad's wild ride through the dunes. The best part is after this thrilling ride, they got a mad luxurious tent in the middle of the desert with a classy meal. I was watching this with my girlfriend and she looked right at me and said, wow, that sure would be nice. Thanks a lot, Ben. Now I got to take my girl on a trip to the dunes. I'm not going to ask y'all to buy my merch or become a channel member. I'm going to sell some Pokemon cards and make this dune trip happen. So don't worry, guys. Later in the night after the date that felt like something out of The Bachelor, Ben and Wood Girl have a deep conversation. Conversation. Love those. Let's roll the clip of that. What changed 
from when we were texting and getting so close. When I found out that we were just friends and we were not boyfriend and girlfriend, it really hurt. I'm really sorry, but I didn't know that you think... Porque tú nunca dijiste, vamos a ser novios. Don't you guys feel like it's more sus that she's all of a sudden just responding in Spanish? When we know that she speaks perfect English, it's almost like I need to check my house for cameras. ¿Cómo es que pudiste saltarte de un paso? Eso no tiene sentido. Ben had every reason to believe him and this girl were in a relationship, and if he thought they were in a relationship, I highly doubt that he would have sent her $1,000. Which, side note, the $1,000 hasn't been brought up, so is that one of those big ed scenarios where he said he sent $5,000 in gifts to Rose that never showed up. Like, is the thousand dollars real or no? Ben actually says a lot of the same things that we're saying. And he says that, hey, you know, me and you talked, we said that we were gonna build a family together and said all these things over text and it was real to me. So when Ben expresses these concerns to Mahaguni, this is her response. Para mí eso era prácticamente solo texto. Para mí es normal. Antes de empezar una relación, te habla de ello como matrimonio familia para saber si es que estamos en la misma página. I disagree with her strongly. Nothing is normal about this situation. For Ben, you really thought you were going to marry this 22-year-old catfish from Peru after three months of texting? Lol. For Mahaguni, you're a troll. Like, I get what you're trying to say, that it's normal to ask someone that you're thinking about getting romantically involved with if they want to have kids later in their life. That's not what you did. What you did was promise this dude that you were going to start a family together, that you really loved him, and you aged this entire situation on, now he showed up and you're acting completely different. When for this dude, he thought that you guys were like gonna build a relationship together and build a family together because you said that shit to him. After my divorce, I dated someone who was 27 years old for three years and we were gonna get married, but when it came down to it, she did not accept my children. All right, am I too hot or does anyone else find it weird that Ben is still using this translator to talk to this girl when it's just them in the middle of the desert and the film crew, but you don't need to speak to her in, in Spanish or translate your messages because she understands everything you're saying. At this point, I'm just thinking Ben should just copy Gino's segment and give this Latina a toothbrush and just see what happens. Tu primera esposa eh, no funcionó porque la religión fue la culpable. Me dices que su, se saliste con una chica de 27 años, pero que ella no aceptó a tus hijos. Entonces Benjamin es perfecto y no hace absolutamente nada. Hmm, the emotional intelligence is strong with this one. I don't know why she said that in Spanish and not in English. However, that comment was right on the money. I agree. I think Ben's a narcissist that uses religion in order to manipulate girls into sleeping with him. The question is, how big a narcissist? Are we talking little Edward level or not? I feel like I don't have to defend my past because it's behind me now. <laughs> That is the most immature response. Oh yeah, all the pain that I inflicted on all my past partners, that's behind me. Like, this guy is so immature for his age and it's actually a huge red flag. I'm so happy that this conversation happened with Mahaguni. Ben is high key insulted that Mahaguni said this to him. He even says, I don't ask her about the holes in her story. Well then ask her about the holes in her story, bro. Fast forward to the next episode, Ben is so butthurt about the fact that Mahogany called him out for not accepting responsibility in his past relationship. So to get back at her, he misses breakfast with her and her parents. Lo que me gusta de su personalidad y de, su, de él es que habla mucho de Dios. Didn't realize talking about God is a personality trait, but continue. Also, I feel like the relationship is rocky at best if the one thing that you like about this guy is the fact that he talks about God. Next thing you know, Mahogany informs her parents about the argument that she had with Ben the last night about the fact that he doesn't take any responsibility for his role that he plays in relationships and in his life. Then the parents ask where Ben is because he was supposed to meet them for breakfast, but he's standing them up quite literally. And Mahogany says, oh, wow, he must be in his room, but it is getting late. Then the camera pans over to Ben in his hotel room and he's packing his suitcase. Ben says to the audience that he feels weird this morning and he feels like Mahogany is checked out of their relationship. <laughs> okay, so the reason that he feels this way is hilarious. He feels this way because last night, I guess because of the argument, it really was just brewing and living rent-free in Ben's mind. So this dude writes Mahogany a 10-page text about the former relationship that he had with his ex-wife and why it works and why they're on good terms. And would you believe it, after Ben sent these text messages to Mahogany, he is outraged that she didn't respond to him. This dude really wrote 10 pages of text about another girl and is surprised that Mahogany didn't respond. 10 pages of 
attaches a motherfucking term paper, bro. I don't know how he wants her to respond to this. This girl's 22, bro. It's not like she's gonna write a counter argument paper to you. Size 12 font MLA format, works cited page. You guys get it. The longer I talk about this, the weirder it seems. You know what though? Now that I'm thinking about it, I really wanna see those text messages that Ben sent to Mahogany. Wet socks, please message Mahogany if her Instagram is still up. Message her and try to get those text messages for me. I will Venmo you, my guys. I wanna read that out loud to the class. I had my morning devotions and the very first verse that pops up, my verse of the day, is that there is no fear in love. And that just like really hit me. Ben often finds himself dealing in absolutes, especially when he's quoting the Bible. I feel like this girl has every reason to be fearful when she's dealing with a 52 year old man child that blames the woman in every relationship he's been in for why the relationship failed. And that's all I'm getting from her is fear. She's just, she's afraid of my intentions. She's afraid of what her parents are gonna say. She's afraid of what her friends are gonna say. There shouldn't be any fear in this. So I've decided not to go to breakfast today. Now Ben's being all dramatic, acting like a scorned wife and not coming down to breakfast. It's just so dramatic. And the situation doesn't make sense, but I'm not surprised because this entire relationship doesn't make sense. I'd like to thank the entire community for their patience. I know that this storyline and a lot of the storylines don't add up. The good news is that there's light at the end of the tunnel, y'all. We are getting a new season of the show and the cast members look pretty messy. I think it'll be better than this season. I want to say out of all the seasons I reviewed of this show, this one is hands down the most unprofessional. And it's kind of frustrating for me as a content creator because I'll try to follow the storylines that are presented from the show and then stuff will come out on Instagram or other platforms and it'll go against my entire video or like the storyline that I'm following. I think you guys get where I'm coming from. Shit's a mess. Uh, hopefully the next season is cleaner. You know, you guys got to make them sign those NFTs, bro. I mean, those NDA. I don't know why that joke is funny to me, but it is. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Comment below, subscribe. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.